Time to work on the suspension for the cradle I'm building for our grandchild. <clears throat> the There's going to be numerous steps here. I need to punch some quarter inch holes in the part of the suspension system. This is a piece of leopard wood. And this is actually going to be one of the four link arms. Uh, it's going to get quarter inch holes punched in it. One side will get a half inch hole in it. The other side will flip it over. We'll put a 22 millimeter hole in it. The reason for the holes is I'm actually going to insert ball bearings. Uh, and the sizes are determined by the outer race of the bearing. The inner race is a quarter inch. So we're going to go ahead and punch a quarter inch hole through here. So when everything's said and done, a bolt should pass right through this. I do not have a drill press. I don't trust trying to drill these straight enough by hand. I do have the CMS. The feather board is actually going to hold it vertically. I can insert it. The fences, let me move this. The fences are set so the bit is 7 eighths by 7 eighths. The quarter inch bit is not long enough to penetrate the piece completely, so I do have to flip it over. The fences have to be set extremely accurately so the a bolt will pass right through them. I did set the stop on the 1400 router, so the bit will only travel up so high. I didn't do anything about keeping it from dropping too far. The bit is 7 eighths of an inch from the back fence and 7 eighths of an inch from this left hand fence. This fence is actually part of the CMS sliding table. I just relocated it to this edge. We're going to close this down. I'm going to set the camera over here and we're going to go through punching a couple holes. One thing you will notice when I flip it over and the bit intersects the previous hole, there will be a puff of smoke. So that lets me know that I am through. I have a couple of lines on this side because there will be another machine operation done to these. I've put an X at four points where I want to put the hole. Very simply a matter of sliding it under the feather board, making sure the feather board is locked securely, and I am clamping the piece just to make sure it stays stable. The unit is hooked up to my CT. I have dust collection on it. Uh, the rear one isn't doing that much good right now because the fence, if you would have no if you noticed, is closed up. So the advantage of using a feather board to hold it down, I don't have to get my hand anywhere near the bit. Again, I know this bit will not penetrate this particular board, but still, you need to keep your hands out of the way. So, I am solid against the rear fence here. I am solid against the left fence. It's approximately seven turns for the bit to come up against the stop on the 1400. Pull it out, get it back under the feather board, hold it tight to the rear fence, clamp it. It just popped through. Turn the board around, again, up against the back fence, up against the left hand fence, 
Make sure everything's aligned. Again, just pop through. You can see it bored right through it. Piece of junk inside there. Nice clean haul. A little bit burnt, but more than adequate for what I need to do. The fences were set accurately enough. I showed you the hole. Quarter 20 bolt, passes through, other side, should be good enough to get a bearing to work. Alright, time for the second step of the operation. With the design of the suspension system, I'm actually going to have trunnions on it. Eventually. This area here will be removed with the router all the way out to here and then the opposite side the same thing happens so they will be Z-shaped. Again, I, I don't have a drill press and I wanted all of these to be drilled the same depth. The way I solved the problem is I took the hole saw and I drilled through some plywood until I was left with the clearance that I need. Too bad. So, that said, we need to change out the bit. Uh, I'm going to go from the quarter inch bit to the a half inch straight bit. So I can make a pass here, 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 and here. Basically, I'm going to be clearing out four sides. Now, to do so... I'm going to remove this fence because I just don't need it anymore. Slide it off, comes off very easily. Set it aside. As you can see, the reducing ring is covered. I can't get to the collet to remove the um, bit. So instead of re removing the fence completely and loosening both bolts, all you need to do is, is loosen one of the two bolts, remove the other completely, and just swing the fence out of the way. Once you do that, you can go ahead, remove the reducing ring. Make sure the unit's unplugged. In this case, the uh, lock knob was not tightened because I was running the router up and down while I was working. This being the 1400, you must pull the trigger and unlock the switch. If you do not unlock the switch, the collet will not come loose. So we're going to go ahead and raise it up. I have a bent wrench. This is actually a Sommerfeld. It's for the Bosch and the Makitas. So, reach under the table, lock the ratchet, remove the quarter inch bit, half inch straight bit, going to be inserted, again you have to reach under the table for the ratchet lock. I'm a little deep on the bit, so I'm going to back the pallet off. And pull the bit up. Snug up the pallet, and that's good. 
I'm gonna go ahead and drop the bit and begin to set the fence back in place. I'm gonna raise the bit up some and grab the piece that I have to route. As you can see, I've drawn a line along the edge of the trunnion. So what I want to do here is use that line, move the fence back, turn the router bit, just to make sure the router bit is not going to take out part of that circle. Go ahead and lock the fence down. And I'm actually going to look at it on one more side, just to make sure it looks okay. Yep, it'll clear. So, the next thing we have to do is get our elevation. Again, I'm going to turn the bit. And as you can see, when I board it, I put it so close to the edge that I could actually just chip that area out. So I know that's where my router bit needs to be set. I'm going to go ahead, drop the router bit. Place, it, place the stock over the bit and begin to raise it and just feel when the bit contacts. Right there it just made contact. I'm going to flip it over, check that one, feels good. All of it feels good. Next thing and very important step, lock the router knob. So, that's all set. The next thing we need to look at is dust collection. Because the fence is closed, hooking the hose to the back of the fence is absolutely useless. So what I did is I took the drapery tool out of one of my cleaning kits. Removed the brush. And I am going to place it on the router table. Once I get the cord out of the way, just like this, have to go get the clamp. Take a quick clamp, place it through the finger hole. and lock the drapery tool down. The other thing I did with the dust collection, you can see how it is now. The other thing I did with the dust collection, uh, the hose I'm using is actually for the Planex. The other thing I did with the dust collection is I am not using the Y connector that comes with the CMS or is optional on the CMS. I've got it hooked to a 27 millimeter hose or router and some of you may remember my boom arm I made. Well, in this case, I've got the 27 millimeter hose throttled and the 36 millimeter hose wide open. So with all of that, we should get some pretty good dust collection. Next step, I need to install the fence on the sliding table. It's simply a matter of Taking the fence, sliding it on, and tightening the nut on the keyway. This knob here, turn it 180 degrees, you can move the fence to lock it, turn it 180 degrees. This one allows you to adjust the angle. You can see how loose everything is. 
Lock that. Lock the fence. Now it's not hitting the table. It's also clearing the bit. All right. Everything clears now. We should be good to go. Sacrificial piece. Always back up your work. Plug the unit in. It's on auto. Lock the switch on the 1400. And let's give it a try. <laughs> Next we'll get to clearing out from here to here and leaving the trunnion on one side and taking it off the other. It's time now to remove the material between this slot and this slot. I do not want to cut into the trunnion on either side. Eventually one trunnion on each side will be removed opposite each other. And the reason being is I want this to actually be a Z-shaped piece. I have set the travel stops. Travel stops are here. And if I slide the table forward, and the second one is back there, slide it to the rear, and it will stop. There is a set of rollers underneath the table that the travel stops work against. And this particular knob actually locks the sliding table if you don't want it to move. So. There you go. That's how we're making the notches. So as I run my piece, I'm against the, tra the sliding fence. It will pick up approximately 50% of the router bit there into the slot. It'll come along and cut approximately 50% into that slot. Should give me plenty of clearance to work with it. My depth of cut has not changed since I made those grooves. I obviously want them to remain the same. So I will set the fence to take off approximately 50% of the bit. This is a half inch straight router bit. So we're going to take about a quarter inch off with each pass. I am only going to eyeball it. I'm not going to measure it. It doesn't matter whether or not the fence is dead square to the sliding table. It's only a single contact cut. And we're removing all the material. So if it's slightly tapered, it'll all go away in the end. So you got to want to make sure everything is snugged up. I'm going to do this without the feather boards on it strictly because of the way this is. I now have to also back this fence off and I'll leave it slightly short of the main fence. This will take probably four cuts per side so a total of 16 cuts will be made. You'll notice that when I have it locked against the one fence the on the sliding table and go to place it against the primary fence 
the piece will actually be sucked in because of the rotation of the unit. The other thing I did was added the UG wing from the Capex. The reason why I did it is this gap right here with the standard outfeed table on it is about two and a quarter inches, which is greater than my distance from the edge of the slot to the end of the board. I'm worried about it as I come through on my last cut and remove all the material, this end dropping and into the bit, thus causing a problem. So hopefully this will work out. It has been aligned so the piece slides right across it and it's been set on plane with the top. I can't tell you if it's level, but I can tell you it's on plane. So here we go. We're going to make some cuts. I'm also going to change something once I move the bit back and we're going to try and um, pick up a little more dust. Four passes, one per corner, and now we're going to move the fence back. The dust collection was pretty good on that. I expected more dust uh, because whenever you're routing grooves, dados, there's usually just dust. So we're going to move it back and see what happens here. I'm moving it back according to the scale on the fence, about three millimeters. So we're going to make four more passes. that was accumulated there and I'm going to try something. I don't know if it's going to help, but we're going to give it a shot. We know that as the piece is going through, the router bit is turning, it's actually throwing the dust that way. 
So I'm going to loosen this fence, slide it in, loosen this fence, slide it out. And you do have to be careful that you pick up the nut on the back of the fence. Don't come off of it completely. Grab some tape, and again, just cover the top. And what I'm hoping, I don't know if it's going to help or not, is that the dust will actually be thrown more into the airflow of the vacuum. Now, Make sure everything's tight. Whenever you do something, double check to make sure everything's tight. So, we're going to give it a shot here and see if it helps. I'd say moving the opening of the fence over definitely helped in this particular operation. Obviously, you need the bit out of the way to do it, but it definitely helps. I've done all four sides. So, now it's time to move the fence back again. Again, about three millimeters. And I'm actually going to take a look to make sure it's going to pick up both sides. And this is where having the UG fence on here, or UG wing on here, really is going to help. Because as I come across, I've got to make sure that it doesn't drop. And I will lose the support of this piece here eventually. So... Let's give it a shot, see what's going to happen here. Okay, I don't want to take the whole thing off in one pass, but that looks like enough so I can do it in two. actually going to finish this side. There was such a small section left that as you can see even before I got the end it had removed it completely. The grain of this wood actually, it just broke off evenly, and I have no issues with that.
can't set the piece, I have to remove that spoilage. So, there you go. We've removed the material between the two trunnions. All looks pretty good. The next step of the operation will be removing one trunnion on each side opposite each other.